Hi, I'm Tim Carter, AskTheBuilder.com. I'm here at a new house job site, Bar Harbor, Maine, getting ready to install some Oop Onor Wurzbo HEPEX radiant tubing for the floor above us. Okay, here's the trouble. We have 24 inch on center framing and the plates have to be 8 inches on center. And that means that it's much, much more difficult to do this than framing that is 16 inches on center. I have not been able to find a video like this on YouTube. Let's hope I do this the right way and you understand how hard it really is to do. Right behind me, you have to make a platform to work on. You cannot do this job just working off of ladders. It's much too difficult and you'll see why in just a moment. The first step is you need to set the reel of the HEPEX you know, up so that it can rotate easily because it needs to come off like this. All right. Now, the problem is you want to set the reel up really close to where the manifold is going to be. And in our case, the actual manifold is going to be right below it in this closet wall. So the first thing now to do is we have to get this up and we're going to put it up through the trusses. We have to run all the way down to the end of the house where that loop starts to make its turn and then we need to start weaving it through the trusses. I'll show you that in a minute. You have to take some tape and you need to tape off the end of the PEX tubing so that as you run the pipe through all of the trusses and joists and whatever, you don't get any sawdust down into it. It's really important. And once you finish and make your final cut, tape the end of that tubing as well. It's also very important that you need to label your tubing. You need to know what each loop is doing and where it's going because it's a whole nother long, long video. You need to know how long the PEX tubing is and you need to know which loop it is within the zone. So this one is going to be called Over Master Bath Supply. And once we eventually cut off at the end of the reel, once we're all done making our loops, that would be the Overmaster bath return. I'm at the end of this loop and you can see there's three plates above my head here. This is what makes this so difficult and I want to say something right now. If these were regular floor joists you have no idea how hard this would be. The fact that these are floor trusses makes this infinitely easier. So if you have anything to do with designing a home before you build and you're going to do radiant tubing like this and you're going to have 24 inches on center, which sometimes happens, got to go with floor trusses. Now, we've got the tubing all the way from the reel down here to the end of the loop. Here's what needs to happen. We're going to not go down this bay here. We're not going down this one at this point in time. That will be the last loop that's pulled. You'll see that in a few minutes. What has to happen is this tubing is going to come down this bay and it's going to go all the way to the end and it's going to come through this end right here, this large triangle at the end. Then it has to come back all the way down. It has to come all the way back here. Okay, and it has to, this is really important. These floor trusses have got this center line, this rectangle. This is above my head is where the loops are going to happen. You're going to see that too in a little bit. So you do not, you do not want to go back through here with your loop. You have to go through here. And that's the magic. And now we're going to go down this truss bay and do what we just did here. And this is the hardest part because you have to pull all this slack through these trusses until you can get this end of the pipe. It's got to go all the way back down to where the reel is. So this is where everybody struggles with this. And this is why it's so important to have a platform under your whole work area because if you were trying to do this using ladders, you would go crazy. So let's get to work. Oh, by the way, I got rid of my sweatshirt because it started to get warm. That's why I had a wardrobe change. Here's something I really wanted to go over. To be able to pull these, this loop through in this S fashion through the trusses, you need to generate some slack. 
And here I am pulling it through that first truss bay, and I just put slack down here, and it's going to allow me some room to start pulling it through. You'll see that here. Watch this. Yeah. You can see why you have to have these platforms. It'd be a nightmare otherwise. Okay. And here I come down. See, you know, I've got some slack to work with. And then once again, I have to go through this truss here, and I'm going to work my way back down to that next center line down the trusses. This is the magic of being able to run it. This is the only way it can be done. We've looped it through all of the floor trusses. It really wasn't too bad, and it's because we had the platform. It makes it so much easier. Here's the, here's the original end of the tubing. Now what has to happen? It's got to go all the way back down through this chase to get to where the reel is. And this actually is the supply line, as crazy as it sounds. When the hot water starts to flow through the pipe, it will be coming into the pipe here, and it's going to start its journey down through the trusses, this bay that's closest to the reel. It's really pretty cool. So now I just have to get this back to where the reel is. We're ready to install the PEX piping. This is so much fun, i got to be honest with you. This is really, really, really important. You actually have to kind of work backwards, as crazy as it sounds. This particular, you know, heat transfer plate is the one that is closest to the manifold. That's where you start. A lot of times you might think you go all the way to the end. That's the last one we'll do. So the first hammer blow with the rubber mallet is right here. And you just want to make sure you don't see, I, I don't want a friction point right here. If you can see where this tubing is, I don't want a friction point there because I want to have it away from the wood because the PEX expands and contracts. Got to use a rubber mallet and you just tap away. And you just run all the way down the heat transfer plate and then I'll show you where it loops into this transfer plate. Actually the farthest one over here is where it goes in to start its journey through all of the trusses. As you can tell I got it tapped into the first heat transfer plate in this bay that's closest to the manifold. Now the loop's going to come here you're going to skip two transfer plates and go into the fourth one. It's going to run down there and then it's going to loop and it's going to come back down and it's going to start its journey into the third bay. I want to talk a little bit about making this loop. If you go to the Oop Onor Wurzbo website and get their manual, it's a big manual that shows how to put their PEX pipe in. This is the HE PEX. It's the oxygen barrier radiant tubing. Here's what you need to know. When the tubing goes into this heat transfer plate, you don't want it to make a tight bend here because the aluminum could wear on the PEX, so it's really important to get as, as much of a straight line like about like this before you start to put that in, if you can see that. In other words, you don't want to make the loop tight like this. That's a bad idea. You have to have some excess tubing back here. I've come down the second track. This is where you've got to stop and do a little bit of thinking. You have two options, which you can do. And it's going to depend on the way your plates work out in the trusses and where you start. I know that doesn't make sense, just trust me. You can, if you want, I can make a tight loop here and come down this plate. And then as I go towards you, I can make another tight loop and then come down this plate with the next run and then curl into this next truss bay where my hand is. What you don't want to do, here's what you don't want to do. You've got to think it through. You don't want to loop your tubing in these three plates so that you come out of this heat transfer plate and make the tight bend underneath here. That's a bad idea, really a bad idea. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of making the tight turn here, we're going to go down this heat transfer plate to the end, make a tighter loop, come down the center, 
and then loop back into this third truss bay. I just finished putting in all three tracks. It's really pretty interesting. I think you can see what's happening here. In other words, originally that tubing came down. Here's the journey that the water's going to take as the water's being pumped. It's going to come down this loop, go down here. Behind you in the screen, there's a loop to, that gets into this track. The water continues its journey here, and now it's going to head into the third truss bay where we are going to put this one in the center track. Woo! <laughs> okay. We're done. It's crazy. Let me tell you something right now. If I didn't have to tape this video, I'm here to tell you we would have had the whole thing done in about 20 minutes, maybe 30 at the most. It was really, really fast because of using the platforms so much easier. Here's what you need to know. This is the last track. This is the outside wall of the house right here. I am as far away from the manifold as I can be. And I'm looking all the way down this chase here, and it's just awesome. This, this is the return line. What's going to happen is, as the pump pumps the hot water through the system, eventually the water is going to be coming down here. It would have lost a lot of its heat because it's going through the heat transfer plates, and it goes back through here all the way back to the boiler to get reheated. That's why it's so important when you start this loop, you have to start putting it in as close to the manifold as possible. It's really that simple. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump down and I'm going to show you exactly how the loops look from the ground looking up in case it's been a little confusing. I think once you see that, it will all make sense. I want to give you a little tour now of what the tubing looks like installed. And this hopefully will allow you for it to make sense. My son-in-law, who helped me with this job, this is his home, he explained it. The reason you, your brain locks up on this is because you actually have to run the loop backwards. And that's where everybody struggles with this. And believe me, we actually figured it out using a roll of string on the breakfast table the day before we did our first loop over in the garage. Let me take you on a tour. Here's what's happening. You can see over my head, this is where the hot water is going to come from the boiler. It's going to come down this first plate. It comes all the way down. It goes underneath this truss into that bay. Remember, it's got a nice wide turn. It comes down. It goes all the way down here, makes a bend, comes down this plate here, makes a tight turn, goes this way this way and jumps down into the next loop and of course it's now in the center loop we skip two we're coming down here comes the water from the boiler going this way this way makes a loop down there comes into this plate here comes down jumps underneath into the next bay we skip two plates we come down go down there skip this plate come this way Come down, tight loop here. Then we jump into the next truss bay. Come down the center one here. A tight loop here. You can see it loops back. Comes here, down. We jump underneath here. We go into the center one, come down. Make the tight loop down there. Come back this one. Big loop here, come this way. Big loop into the final bay. We come down, come here, and then this pipe at the end, it goes from the end of this one all the way back to the manifold, and you've done it. You've got victory, you've succeeded. Good luck when you do it. If you do the job using this video, please make sure you leave a comment and tell others what you did. I really appreciate it. I'm Tim Carter, askthebuilder.com.
If you want to discover more home improvement tips, go to askthebuilder.com.